Court School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So let's talk about zone sampling today. Uh, farmers have invested quite heavily in a lot of precision ag technology, whether it's yield monitors or planter monitors or vertebrate uh, fertilizer spreaders and sprayers. So today let's, uh, let's look at how do we get value, for example, out of a yield monitor. And uh, we see that sometimes we have five or six years, certainly at least three years of yield data. How do I use that to help create some management zones to be more effective on my inputs and, and basically my soil sampling? So one of the tools here is what we call a normalizing yield, looking at years, three or more years of yield data off the same field. Also a term called MYYA, multiple year yield analysis. Uh, these are GIS functions that can be done very quickly and, and quite simply a, a very basic uh, premise here is which parts of the field are average every year, which parts are above average, which parts are below average and we can see in the green areas on this map that these are uh, the areas that are always above average no matter what I grow and every year these are my high performing areas of the field and the balance of my field is average and then we see some of those blue areas around the outside edge that are always friendly poor that tend to be the headlands and long bushes and ditch banks and things so shouldn't come as any surprise but sometimes uh, we want a little more information too so then we look at some satellite imagery this is a, a false color image and basically what the red areas are saying this is the low reflectance or the dark colored areas which tend to be the low slope positions and the green areas are higher reflectance values which tend to be the sandy knolls this is what the satellite picks up and we can use those reflectance values again to create some zones that look an awful lot like the multiple year yield analysis and between these two layers we can start to make an amalgam and put some zones together and that's what we've done here and the, the zone map would go out to an applicator or to a soil sampler rather and he would follow and do a composite sample in each zone and we would assign those soil sample values to the zone and now the farmer is prepared to manage in these zones so all input all yield analysis is done on a zone basis so here we're seeing the potash uh, layer, for example, and we can see in the top part of the map here, we got some very high potash levels where we don't need to apply anymore. We've got uh, some areas that are, are much lower that we perhaps we need to pay attention to. So it gives me a different look. And you imagine if you just did two composite samples on this field, you only have a field average. So really it, it speaks to, you know, what is the variability in the field? What are my management options and opportunities? Again, the phosphorus layer showing uh, some wide range of phosphorus from nine to 20. This chart being a little busy, but let's just highlight there. We got six zones now. Uh, we got a pH that goes from 6.2 to 7, an average of 6.8, which is good. Soil organic matter ranges from 2 to 3.7, averaging 2.7. Phosphorus from 7 to 20, averaging 12. Soil test from 109 to 162, averaging 132. All looks pretty good, but it does beg the question, what is the soil test value on this field? What implications are there for nutrient management and application strategies? So now I have an idea just how variable my field is and where that variability is. And my yield maps are saying I got differences in yields there as well. So now I can start to create some strategies around, well, how would I apply my fertilizer? So this is an application map for potash. It was created in the GIS using those uh, tools of both the yield map and the soil test data to do a build and maintenance approach. And I can see I got areas that are basically crop maintenance at 50 pounds of potash. And I got some areas where I'm starting to address some of the low or short areas in the field with a little more application of potash. And so the field average suggests that I don't need to build any more soil test K at 132 parts per million, but I do have 22 acres there that are not up to where we want them to be. So while I created no overall savings for potash, I have put it in the right spot where it's needed. So when you talk about 4-R nutrient stewardship, then this map just epitomizes the right product, right rate, right time, right place. Uh, this is where we want to be. This is going to help uh, maximize uh, our yield, uh, minimize environmental footprint, and uh, optimize nutrient use efficiencies. Again, this is the uh, kind of closes the loop on the technology. So uh, this is an as-applied map from the applicator. So it's recording what it was putting on. Now we have... Uh, from the creation of the management zones to the soil sampling to the yield layers to the recommendation to the product application now i'm just got a map that confirms it all it says this is what we put on it's all my gis it's all organized it's all there for me to uh to do subsequent analysis on and as management opportunities change and i want to change practice at least i've got a base from which to make my changes from so we're in the office today uh 
more exciting to be out looking at equipment and driving tractors and combines, but the money is made in Precision Ag, in the office, in the GIS, taking all that information you captured in the field, bring it in the office, bring it in GIS, get it organized, start to run the programs and, and analytical procedures that are available to you in some of these programs, and start to put the dollars and cents to what you're doing, create those return on investments uh, before you spend a lot of money. Be sure you understand what it is you're looking at and where your opportunities might lie.